Hey there, everyone. This is Tom at Cox Hernandez. You may know me as the voice of Lexington on Disney's Gargoyles, Felix the Cat in The Twisted Tales of Felix the Cat. I play Clarion the Witch Boy on Young Justice League and Young Justice League Phantoms. I was also the voice of Dipstick in 101 Dalmatians and the voice of Snap for Rice Krispie Cereal. I've done over 2,000 commercials for radio and TV. And you're watching In Conversation with my friend, Amber the Fangirl. Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to another episode of In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is a voice actor, best known for being the voice of Lexington on Gargoyles, Felix the Cat in The Twisted Tales of Felix the Cat. He yeah. also played Brian in Falcon Crest, which is the live action show spark plug in scooby-doo and the goblin king dipstick in 101 dalmatians the series and many more my guest is tom adcox hernandez Welcome. hello everybody hello amber Hi. so nice to see you i love your cat ears I thank love you them. thank you did, did i say did i say your last name right yes you did okay good yeah sorry i, I forgot to ask um i've got to make sure beforehand so yeah i said it right cool you did yay so how are you tom i'm doing really well i'm doing really good i'm uh just sending auditions daily and i sent a few this morning and oh, that's cool working on some things and yeah everything's good i'm all my dogs are good everything's really good oh you have dogs what breeds are uh, they I've, uh two uh dachshunds the wiener dogs and oh. one chihuahua oh yeah. bless yeah. i have a shit zoo oh they're great they're yeah so yeah they're so i love them dogs. yeah i, I do lot. too i love well, animals all of, all, yes all animals i was just gonna say the same thing i'm i'm such an animal nut i i if i see like a, will be driving down the street and i'll see a lizard on the side of the street that looks injured and i'll pull over and stop and try to save it <laughs> you know I right? lizards yeah in um, palm springs we've got all kinds of lizards and snakes but I, i'm not oh, a wow. snake fan but it, like i've had like hamsters all my life and dogs all my life i'm just a i'm an animal i'm so uh, i just love them that's so that's so weird to like hear about lizards on the sidewalk because obviously in england they're very uncommon well yeah uncommon as in yeah can't even yeah. find them um i did find an, a newt in my back garden though once oh yeah 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 um I, I, I just found it one day and i don't know it was just scuttling on by i think um in in this country they're actually protected they're a protected oh. species oh you're kidding yeah That's so funny. i think that means like it's illegal to like kill or hurt them yeah. i think yeah. yeah yeah so that was really cool to see one oh, and just had a picture of it taken in my hand and i looked so petty because it's gonna bite me or something i, I know want... they're, they're so docile they're very Are they? very okay, that, yeah they're good. very calm and they don't they don't bite that's good i had no clue how we got into our garden though because we don't even have a pond oh no so that's weird who knows where it came from literally i yeah. i, I still, that's so weird because like the nearest pond i'd say is about three doors down our street you can't have oh, sure they wow. climbed over the fence and stuff it's it's so odd, you know, how they yeah, got there. Yeah, that's a long stuff. way to walk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, snakes. I've held a snake once. Uh, we had a yeah. snake at my old school as a pet. Um, oh, yeah. I can't remember his name. So I can't, yeah, I can't remember. It's flown out my head. But um, I held him once. And he had, <laughs> it's like it a little pool so noodle. so weird. Yeah, yeah. And he went, he went, he went like down my shoulder. And like, I was, because I was on a school uniform, I had like a jumper. And he just, he stuck out like the sleeve. Oh of, my God. Like, my school jumper. I was like, oh my gosh. He's just wriggling around everywhere. Yeah, That's great. Funny. Yeah, great. Oof. All right. I'll stop talking now. Um, so, oh. <laughs> talking. Oh, Tom. So, do you have any questions about, uh, my career? Or... I do indeed. So, a lot of people may know you. For gargoyles. So, what was it like um, to record for gargoyles? Gargoyles, <laughs> because gargoyles. you said it was an ensemble recording that yes. you did. Yes. Hello. Um, well, you know, it's very strange because it's that was my first animated. Well, I did a little commercial for a radio thing, but before that, that uh, gargoyles was actually my first animation job. Oh. And, yeah. 
And there's a uh, funny story because the when I got a voiceover agent, I had no desire to, I never thought about it, about being a voiceover actor because I was doing, I knew I was wanted to be an actor since I was very little. Um, but I did plays and commercials for TV on camera stuff. And then I was with my commercial agent who <laughs> had uh, an, a voiceover department, but I had no desire. I never thought about uh, doing voiceover. I never thought I had a distinctive voice or anything. And um, one day I was talking with my commercial agent and my on-camera commercial agent and the voiceover agents, two of them, um, walked by and they stopped because they could hear me talking and they said, God, you have a great voice. He is, do, are you represented for voiceover? And I said, no. And he goes, well, we'd love to represent you. And they were a very, like one of the top five voiceover um, agencies in Los Angeles. So I said, yeah, I'd love to do it. So I went in and I, I literally read for hundreds of auditions because they were bringing me in so much. And I, they used to, that was back when before they did it from our home. So I'd have to drive over to the, the, my agent's office and do it in the office every day, five days a week. And I didn't book one thing for a year. I was like, what is going on? I didn't book one job. And then I finally booked that one little commercial. And then uh, Jamie, the uh, Thomason, who ended up being a big director on uh, Gargoyles and a, and a number of other shows, and uh, Jeff Howell, who was also a director, um, they had left and went over to Disney to do casting at Disney. And I had new agents at the agency. And they brought me in, Jamie Thomason brought me in for, for Gargoyles. And I remember walking into the agents to the audition at Disney and they had, um, and I remember seeing Ed Asner in there and I was going, oh my God, oh my God. And there was all these other guys that were reading for my part that were series regulars on TV shows. And I thought, oh, I'm never going to get this. They're going to go with the celebrity. They're not going to go with me. Well, I ended up, I went in the booth and read and it was for Greg Weissman, the creator and Jamie Thomason and I read and then they had me read another time and uh, then I booked it. So that was the first job and I was like, wow, how great. And I remember my agent telling me at the time, she said, you're, you're like the only person that's on that show that's not a, a celebrity. So it would be so great because we would go in and like I said, it's an ensemble and we would sit in a semicircle and uh, just uh, we would read it through once and the, the booth, they'd be in the, the, their booth in the studio and they would give us some changes or some, you know, tr try it this way, try it that way. And then we would, and then we'd actually take a break and then we would tape it. But it was, it was so great because we would, uh, we had so much fun that the cast was so great. Um, the, it was just one of the best experiences I ever had. It was, you know, finding that how, you know, what the character, what they really wanted or what they wanted you to sound like for me it was just a whole new thing because, you know, it was my first voiceover job. So it was, it was, uh, I was so lucky. That was a, a lucky job to get. Yeah, so. definitely. I agree. I'm literally looking at pictures of Lexington right now and I can't imagine anyone's voice coming out of him apart from yours. Like it just Aww, fits it. Thank you. Thank you. You're you welcome. know, Greg Weissman told me uh, that, and he's, he said this at some of the cons and stuff that when they were casting Gargoyles, they didn't know what Gargoyles would sound like. And they said, when I came, and Greg told me this and I was so flattered. He said, when you came in the, and we heard your voice, we went, that's what a gargoyle sounds like. That's what a gargoyle sounds like. Maybe it's because of the rasp or whatever. But then he told me that he, he told Jeff Bennett, who played Brooklyn. Uh, um, did he play Brooklyn? Yeah. He, he told him because Jeff's like an amazing voiceover guy. He can do all kinds of voices. I, I don't do a lot of different voices. I do 
my voice higher or lower or with an accent or not. But he said, uh, he told Jeff, just try to find your match Tom's voice a little bit, you know, try to find that. And so he kind of did it like, you know, like that. And then, and then Bill Fogerbach, he did uh, Broadway and his voice had a rasp like that, you know, and he did. So it, it, that's what made the, the, the clan. Um, and so Greg's told that story many times, but he said, your, your voice is the one that we went, that's it. That's what we're looking for. So yeah, it was a great, great job. And, and just, I'm still really close friends with Greg. Um, he, he, I've done so many jobs with him now, like uh, Young Justice League and Young Justice League Phantoms. And he always writes these great, uh, you know, I'm Clary and the Witch Boy on Young Justice. And he, he, they're just such, he's such a great friend, great writer, great director. He's an amazing person, but yeah. So he continues to use me in, in uh, all the shows and stuff he does. Thank God. I'm so happy for that. <laughs> that story has just made my day. They just made me smile to think that you have had pretty much a really big impact on the show. Yeah, I know. When he told me that, I was like, wow, I had no idea. <laughs> oh, my dimples are so big. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> well, that's good. I have dimples too. <laughs> oh, it hurts to smile. <laughs> if I stop smiling, I start going serious it's because I'm trying to rest them because when I smile for too much, it really like, hurts like like my cheeks. So awesome. if, I, if I just go like this, I'm not bored or anything. It's just me just trying to rest these that's until me. I can smile again. <laughs> that's it. I totally get that. I understand that because I do that too. No, I can't stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'd also like to ask you, Tom, um, on Gargoyles, Frank Welker was on it. He played Bronx. He played the the dog-like one. He he couldn't speak, obviously, but he made, like, dog noise and stuff. Oh, God. He's, he's like, the most amazing animal creature, any kind of voices. You know, he's, he's the best in the business. And to top it off, he's one of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. He is the kindest sweetest man yeah and so talented I mean he would be sitting or I would look I couldn't believe the noises that were coming out of a human's voice I mean I was just he would amaze me all the time and everybody if you ever interview anybody that's worked with him they'll all tell you the same thing he's the just the most talented kindest guy around well, that's good to hear because I've spoken yeah. to him a few times. Um, yeah, yeah, he's great. He's, he's so great. Nice. He's so lovely. Yeah. I'm seeing him again this October in Edinburgh. So, uh, oh, excited. nice. Yeah, I'm excited nice. to see him and Peter Cullen. Very exciting. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Are you still in touch with Frank today, or? Um, no, I haven't. We, you know, we don't haven't swapped numbers or anything like that. We just, you know, we're if I see him at an audition. Well, now, since COVID, we don't go on many auditions live. We used to actually go on auditions and see each other in the lobby and stuff. But now, since that's happened, you kind of lose track, you lose touch with, with a lot of people. So, but I do have Marina Sirtis's number. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> yeah, because her, her husband uh, plays in a band and she invited me to one, to a, one of his band shows that he was doing. I said, give me your number. And so we swapped numbers and. Jeff Bennett and I used to have the same agent for for years. SBV? I, yeah. Yeah. And but I just left them. I was with them for 24 years. Wow. And uh, I just decided it was I needed a change because, you know, certain agencies have um, connections with certain with different people, different relationships with different people. So I thought, yeah, you know, I've been there 24 years you know, maybe I should try somebody that has different connections. And, and I, you know, left amicably and I went with, uh, Sandy Schnarr, great, great Delisle and, um, Connie, uh, Candy Milo. Do you know who she is? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, Candy, they're, they're both really good friends. What's the agent called? I have, uh, what's the, uh, give me a minute. Yeah. Avio. Avio Talio. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, um, I remember about 
probably 10 years ago, I was at a SAG meeting because they were negotiating the voiceovers um, contracts. And I remember Sandy was there and my agent was there, Cynthia too, from SPD. Oh yeah, Cynthia, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so she was there. And, uh, and I remember just saying to myself at the time, I was sitting with Candy Milo and, and uh, Gray, and, and I said to, I said to Candy, God, she is, I go, I just love what she had to say. She just, I just thought, wow, she just seems like a really great person. And I just connected with her so much. And it turns out we're both from Michigan too. She's from Michigan too. And uh, also Rob Paulson, who was with SPV. And uh, so I just left and I, I, you know, told them, I'm, you know, I just feel like it's time for a change. And so I left about four months ago and uh, I, I'm very, very happy with the change. And, and it's funny because I automatically started seeing, getting auditions that were from casting directors that I'd never read for before. So, you know, because each agent has different relationships with different people. So, you know, it was, I mean, SBV is awesome. They're just great. But I'm loving being with AVO also. They're just really Peter Verano and uh, Sandy Schnarr and they're just great. So I'm really happy there. Well, that's wonderful we, to hear. Yeah. I don't know where we were going with the story. What was I, what was I saying? I can't remember. <laughs> um, I, I, I oh, yeah. I, the question was about Frank Welker. Yeah. And then it Frank kind of. Frank Welker. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's crazy how like how one connects to another, connects to another, and then it can just spiral down like a big story or something like that. Oh, my God. It happens to me 10 times a day yeah. I just I, I I constantly will start a story and then I'm like where was I going with this story <laughs> <laughs> uh, um Tom I hear that you're also friends with Susan Blue really good friends with Sue yeah she actually lives down the street in where my house in Palm Springs oh she lives probably six miles down down the street and when I had a, a big Christmas party here uh this past Christmas I invited her and it was great it was great to see her because I hadn't seen her in a while oh she's, yeah she's wonderful she's just a, oh, a great great woman so talented great director um how do you know of her do you know her just from her, from her voice directing or do you know she knows she was a big deal voice actress back in her day she was like the top i know where was rc from transformers oh okay yeah okay. yeah she's a great great lady i just love her so much she's truly a good friend of mine yeah well i'm glad to hear that because i interviewed her as well <laughs> you did yeah she's awesome she is so <laughs> much fun to talk to oh my gosh she's just so great She's she's directed me in quite a few things. I did a um, series with um, years ago with Kath Susi. Do you know who she is? Yes, I do. Yeah, she, she, she's awesome. Kath and I played um, evil uh, brother and sister, mm -hmm. and Kath is with uh, AVO too. Um, so we did this, and Sue directed it, and oh. I played, and it was uh, Steven Spielberg actually chose me for the the role because it was a dream work Steven Spielberg uh, produced it and so I was told that he actually chose my voice so Sue directed it and uh, she's direct she directed all the Twisted Tales of Felix the Cat um, she she's just put me in so many different things she's just a I have, she's just so wonderful wonderful I'm glad you interviewed her yeah it, it's, it's probably got a lot of good stories yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm having a look. If I keep looking down at my phone, it's because I'm looking at all the shows. Go ahead, done. do it. Oh no, yeah, because you. Wow. Oh my. Oh my gosh. Um. It, so, yes, you did Felix the Cat. What? I, yeah. I, and then Charlie Adler took over. How come? How come he took over in the? That was such a weird. That that whole thing was just kind of weird because um it took. I read for that show about nine separate times over a year. It took a year to cast that show. So I remember reading and then they'd call me back and a month later and I'm like, oh God, I'm doing this exact same thing. So I, they finally had to start um, animating it. So they had Sue 
do the 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 scratch track for it for all the di dialogue so they could start animating it so by the time they finally booked they finally booked me on the show i remember them telling me it's between you and mayam bialik and peewee herman uh paul rubens oh rubens yeah yeah and so they got they narrowed it down to us three but they started they, they had sue had already done the whole season with her voice because they had to start drawing it so when i got in the booth to do it uh i would hear sue in my headphones because she would she was doing it and then she directed it so we did i think i did like 21 episodes of it and uh all all of a sudden i think i don't know how they told me but they they let me go even though the show i think the show might not have been doing so well because it was a saturday morning cartoon and it was kind of a bizarre weird kind of show that i think a lot of kids didn't understand but they they fired me which they do often in voiceover they replace people all the time um but then they replaced me with in charlie adler so charlie did a few episodes and then they replaced Charlie, I think, with Cam Clark, which was, and so Cam did a couple episodes. And I remember watching it that's and going, old. wait, that's not my voice coming out of that. And, and it had already been on the air for a while. So I think the producers may have been just trying to figure out why the show wasn't working. So they replaced, you know, a lot of times they'll replace the actor. When I did 101 Dalmatians, um, Cruella was played by April Winchell and I don't know if you know who she is because she she's done a ton of April Winchell's done it yeah uh, yeah I'm trying to get her my channel actually her dad was Tigger the tiger yeah right? Paul Winchell yeah yeah so oh I'm so impressed by you knowing that. <laughs> um, so so after about 50 episodes I see in walks into the studio and we were doing some episodes with Tress McNeil so Tress replaced April after 50 episodes. So you never know why. And I mean, April was amazing as Cruella. And then Tress came in and she was amazing. So you, you never know what, you know, what their reasoning is, why they, they replace people. Um, Greg Weissman wrote a, uh, a show called Max Steel. And it was back in the day. And it was first like the first CGI um, animated show. So, um, and it was called, um, what was it called? Oh, oh, I just said, Max Steele. And he wrote one of the characters for me. I mean, he literally wrote, this character is half Mexican, half German, blah, 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 blah. He made it, he made it more like he, uh, he said that I spoke five languages, the character, I don't. So, so I go in, we go in to do the pilot and Greg's there and we're all there and we do the pilot. And, and I remember saying to them, do you want, because he's so, I go, do you want me to have like an accent? Do you want like a Mexican accent? Or, and they're like, no, 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 no. We want, just do what you do. So I did it. And then I go home and I don't hear anything about, I thought, oh, we'll do the next episode, you know, in a couple of weeks. And I get a call from um, Greg and he says, I have bad news. And I said, what? He goes, well, they, they're letting you go. They're letting you and Ben Vereen go. Ben Vereen was one of the actors on the show. And I was thinking, how are they letting me go? You wrote this character. It's, it's, it's me. What, what? And so they replaced me with this actor, an on-camera actor named Jacob Vargas, who does a lot of movies and TV. He was in Selena. I think he played Selena's brother in, uh, with, with Jennifer Lopez. And so I go into one, so about a couple of weeks after that, Greg brings me in for a guest starring role on the show. So it was uncomfortable because I'm going in to, to do a guest star on this show that I was kicked, that I was fired from. And so I had to sit there and watch uh, Jacob on this damn phone, throw it off the door. Uh, so, um, so uh yeah, so I did a guest starring role and the show lasted like, I think maybe they did 22 episodes and then the show ended. But um, 
again, where was I going with that story? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, it was about uh, voice actors replacing, but yeah, because oh, Charlie yeah. had to replace you. Yeah. And then we talked about 101 Dalmatians. And then I think after that, Suzanne Blakesley literally became the official voice for Cruella in all 101 Dalmatians media onwards. Oh, really? See, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's, it's amazing yeah. stuff. I know a yeah. lot of things. You certainly do. I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a I'm a huge fan of uh, April and Paul Winchell. Yeah. Um Yeah. Oh, yeah. April's great. She's I know. So talented. Yeah. There's so many talented people out there. And it's 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 kind of when I, I remember this this story helped me because you're an actress, you'll understand. Um, like a lot of times we'll read for things and we'll go, why didn't I get that? You feel like you did a great job on the audition. You felt I should get that. I'm all, I'm going to get this. It's, this is so perfect. And um, I remember I did a, when I was starting out in acting and I was like, I don't know, 20, something like that. And I did a movie of the week. And that was when uh, the big networks had these, like they would do these two hour movies and I only had, I, my character didn't even have a name. It was boy. And I had five lines. And so anybody could have done those five lines pretty much. So are we going to do the rehearsal? We had a read through at Universal Studios. So I read, we re read, to, we're reading through the whole script. And then we took a break. And I remember asking the director when we were take, getting coffee together. And I said, I have a question being a young naive kid I just said what why did I get this part because I had friends that read for that part too even though it was five lines I had a couple of friends that read for it too and I was just curious I said well, why did I get this and and nobody and the other guys didn't get it and he goes you know what Tom he goes uh you read as good as some guys and you read better than some other guys some guys read better than you he goes but when you walked in the door you reminded me so much of my nephew that lives in Connecticut and your energy and everything about you reminded me so much of him. And I haven't seen him in about four years. He goes, and so that's why you got it. And I'm thinking, wow, how cool. But then I automatically thought, wait, what if I would have reminded him of somebody that he, that used to torment him or bully him in school what if I would have reminded him of that as soon as I walked in? And then I thought, no matter how good I was or how good I did at the audition, I wouldn't have gotten that part because in his, you know, in his soul, he would have felt a little uncomfortable about me because it, he, I would have reminded him of the bully or something. And then, so that helped me throughout my whole career thinking, well, you know, you can, all you can do is please yourself and do as good as you possibly can. And then, and then it's out of your hands, you know, because there'd be times where I'd go, oh God, why didn't I get that? I should have did this. I should have did that. Why didn't I do it this way? But it's um really, yeah, it helped in my whole career to, you know, to know that it's really kind of out of our hands. We just have to do the best we can do, you know? Very well put, Tom. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Helps a lot. Yeah. Looking at the cast list for Felix, I was like, wow. Wow. I know. Huh? People. Yeah. Mary Kay Bergman. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Bless her. Did you meet Mary? Bless her heart. We were very, Mary, she got me, um, more, she's the one that pushed me into voiceover, Mary Kay Bergman, because we were with this agency, the one, the same agency that first discovered me SBV uh, yeah no not SBV it was called um Abrams Rubeloff and Lawrence and they've been out of business for a while now but they were one of the top agencies and they were the one that first signed me and Mary Kay was with them and I would see Mary Kay in the um waiting room and we had a mutual friend so we'd talk and she would she would talk me up all the time. She goes, God, your voice is so great. You really should do voiceover. She goes, You're gonna do really good at this. You're really gonna do really well. And she and we became became good friends. And then I uh, became friends with her husband and uh, um, was he did a a, a, a movie 
and he was going to cast me as himself because he's Mexican and uh, it didn't work out. It was with uh, Amanda, Amanda Anka, who's a, uh, a voice. She does a lot of voiceover stuff. Um, uh, and the movie, it was just like a little independent film, but I ended up not getting that. But Mary Kay, God bless her soul. She was the kindest, most wonderful person. Oh, such a sweet, sweet kind. I, in fact, not too long ago, I was driving by, she's buried in a cemetery in LA. And I, I went by to see her grave and, and, you know, and just talk to her. And she's got all her characters on, on her headstone, Dino Andrade. He, um, like her, she was Mrs. Butterworth for the maple syrup. And she was all the female characters on South Park. When South Park first started, she was every female character. She did every single voice. And uh, she just, and we did a lot of commercials together. And, and, uh, and yeah, and she ended up taking her own life. It was so tragic. And so I just went up, dro drove by the cemetery and just to stop and say hi. And, her, and me and Dino, her um, Andrade, who does a lot of voiceover now too, um, are still good friends, really sweet guy. Yeah, but yeah, the cast on that, the uh, Maurice LaMarche and uh, of course, Charlie Adler and, and Cam Clark and, and so many people. I mean, that cast list on that show, I was like, wow, I just looked at it today because I have a, a still shot I took of the, the end where they have, it says Tom Adcox Hernandez and really big. And then it says and all the other cast members these amazing, amazing people. I'm looking at them going, oh my God. Cree Summer was on it. She played my my girlfriend in a, in a several of the episodes. Wow, that's so yeah, cool. Yeah, Cree's, Cree's another one that's so amazing and uh, a sweet, sweet, kind, fun, awesome actress. Lovely words, Tom, definitely. Yeah. Oh, oh. Um, yeah, back to Dino. Um, his son Connor is now a voiceover artist. Yeah, and he's working more than me. <laughs> oh, but bless him, yeah, definitely following in Mary Kay and his dad's footsteps. Yeah. 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 Really, it's really wonderful. Dino is such a good guy, too. That's one thing about voiceover. There's so many people that like when I was doing on camera stuff. The people, you know, certain people would be really nice and certain people would be really awful. But in the um, the casting sessions or the, the actual, like when you go to the audition, every, I noticed every casting person in voiceover was so nice. I mean, they go, can I get you a cappuccino? Are you okay? Can I get, and on camera, they're like, okay, Tom, Tom, where are you? Come on, you're up. And, you know, it's like there and there's some really nice on camera casting directors, too. But the ones in voiceover, every single one it, that I met, I would go in and one would be nicer than the next. I was like, wow, this is what I want to do. And that's when I, I gave up uh, on camera, pretty much uh, commercial on camera, because you have to go and you're waiting for two hours sometimes and then you ugh. I just, and I was already working a lot in voiceover. I thought, well, voiceover is so much easier. <laughs> it was for me anyway. I mean, I kind of, you know, I've been so lucky. And luck, I think, has a lot to do with it. I, I really do. I think, you know, being at the right place at the right time. And I, I believe that. I believe in luck too, definitely. Yeah. Well, especially because, you know, there's so many people that are so good. And when you get down to like the callbacks, it's like uh, anybody could do the job. The, any, like if they call back 20 people, every single one of them could do a great job. They just, it's just something that this go, yeah, your voice matches up with the other actor. And, and it's, it's just, it's, that's why it's, it's useless to try to go, why didn't I get that? Why didn't I get that? Because it's just useless. You never know why. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You'll you'll have to um, have it. I've been meaning to say this. Um, I've been meaning to visit the uh, the graves of the voice actors who have uh, passed away. Also, like Mel Blanc and June Frey, and Mary Kay Bergman. You'll have to take me to see Mary's uh, oh. grave after lay a flower there. Absolutely, I will definitely do that. I will definitely do that.
Yeah. She's got, she's buried in its a uh, forest mm-hmm. lawn and where her grave is, where her gravestone is, you can look across the way and you can see Disney Studios. Wow. Hey, 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 hey. My dogs are going crazy. Um, yeah, so right where she's buried, Dino buried her right across. You can look right across the way and see Disney Studios because she was um, Snow, Snow White. White. Yeah, yeah. And she did a lot of things for Disney. So I, w- I will absolutely take you there. When you, when you come and visit, I will, we'll go have coffee and we'll go to Mary Kay's gravesite. Yeah, I'll lay a little rose there, definitely. And maybe, yes, that would be wonderful. And maybe bring Dino too. We'll yeah. Pick him up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that sounds really fun. And also really respectful and kind. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing an interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's okay i know what dogs are like my dog goes crazy when someone knocks on the front door yeah he no, just no, scuttles no. around and just starts barking at the top of his lungs it's so it's funny but at the same time it gets a little bit annoying yeah yeah i understand boy yeah. i understand <laughs> yeah yeah definitely uh let me have a look at my notes because my notes have just closed um you did scooby-doo and the goblin king as well so that was not you obviously um, goggles was not your first time working with frank obviously you did scooby-doo and the Go- goblin king yeah i just did a little part in that scooby-doo thing i think i played a a, a little fairy named flint I think yeah that was yeah yeah oh, oh wait did you i think was that, was that Go- oh scooby-doo no that was spark plug i, I played yeah. a little flint uh, you we were flint and tinkerbell yes and do you know how I got that? That was so strange because you get that? They, they told me that you, uh, I didn't even read. They, they said, oh, no, I did read. They sent me the audition and they sent me a voice match. And I don't do voice matches because I'm not, I don't have that talent to match voices. Um, uh, but they said when I, they, I played, I hit the thing and it was like, this guy sounded, I went, wait, did I, is that my, did I do that? And, and the guy sounded exactly like me. And apparently he was like one of the grips on the, you know, he was like one of the, the people that worked in the food part of the, of the, where they were all doing the, the um, animation. And they said, oh, we like your voice. Why don't you do the, do this, this line, these, do these lines. So when I, when I saw it, I just did my voice because the guy literally sounded exactly like me. So when I went in and worked with the, the big the director on that was a big deal i think he directed toy story and he's done, that was a so i did it and i only had to do it a couple of times because i sounded exactly like the guy that is so cool uh, yeah because i don't normally do voice match uh directed by uh hmm was it clay hall is that his name i don't know i believe so i just yeah. remember thinking he was a big a big director and he had directed a lot of big shows oh yeah he's directed um mighty mouse he directed the simpsons supervising director of king of the hill um he was oh oh he directed planes as well oh oh no hang on hang on hang on john lassiter was the executive producer that's who it is and that's who was in, who was when I went and did the, the lines in the studio. The, the, he, and I was like, wow, this guy's a big deal. I was like so afraid to even talk to him because I think, he, you know, he did all those big shows. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. That must have been so cool. Yeah, like, it really was. Wow. Like, I'm literally just like picturing it now. Like, it feels like anyone can do it, but obviously you got to put the time and the work into it definitely yeah. want to be dedicated yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. classes are classes are good i've taken a few classes but yeah oh i see yeah um i'd like to ask again so i'm just looking at the cats the only i'm just looking at the, just the corner of my bedroom um about lexington um how how much do you think you can relate to lexington are you similar well i know obviously you have the same voice um like <laughs> personality types you know because i love like his little uh friendship with alex uh the little boy yeah. the baby yeah it's just it's yeah adorable. it's so cute um that's on my uh 
that that if you listened to my demo, that's the first thing on my demo. I'm talking to Alex on my if you if you go to my 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 tomadcox.com and you I think if you scroll up, you'll see um uh it's it's my website and it's a, a friend of mine made it for me. It's like not a fancy website at all, but if you go, my demos are both there. My commercial oh. demo and my uh it, my other one in uh that is one of my, the first uh voice on there um but but you know it's funny because when i went in i i'm really not technical at all and i'm i can barely send an audition it's so i'm that untechnical so um in lexington was supposed to be very technical and knew a lot about you know how, how smart he was and, and you know so we had we had uh we didn't have that in common but we, Greg Weissman told a story at one of the cons I was doing at uh, Comic Con somewhere. I don't remember where, but Greg said he was giving a, uh, and this has been out in the, I mean, because he said it in front of a whole con. He said he was going to make, um, if Gargoyles continued, he was going to have Lexington come out as gay. And I'm gay. So I was, you know, we had that in common. So I don't know if Greg, uh knew he greg knew i was gay but he didn't you know he, i don't if he was going to write it in after three years on disney back in 1990s you know that was a big deal if he was going to do that i thought wow how brave well he is a brave amazing man but yeah so that would have been great i wish the show the show never should have got canceled i think because i think i think there was just like infighting between the producers and the directors and disney and all this stuff because the show was so great as you know and it did it was getting great ratings and did very well and then all of a sudden boom cancel it's like yeah. wow that was that was kind of a shock but uh so yeah between i think the similarities for that uh uh, we're both very curious. Lexington is very curious about things, and I'm very curious. And of course, I'm gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that's just reminded me, actually. Um, there is a Comic Con that I just went to at the weekend. Um, you know who Kevin Conroy and Will Friedel are, right? Ke Kevin Conroy? Yes, yeah, uh, Batman. Yeah, and Will Friedel, he was also Batman as well, and Bumblebee, and a lot of Transformers media. Oh. Yes. Um, <laughs> and Ron Stoppable and Kim Possible. Oh, yay! There's Kevin in... Oh, yeah! That's oh, me dressed as Isabel from Animal Crossing. Oh, my gosh, yes, that's so cute. How'd you get that thing on the top of your head? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a custom-made wig. Um, oh, that's great! Yes, yeah, so I, I got it. I, I custom made it myself. I had to do um, a lot of uh, work and stuff like that. So good job on it! Very good. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I did that event, and they've just said on a group guest request thread. I think I'm gonna type. Well, see, you answer my next question. I'm gonna type some of the gargoyles cast. Maybe you could get Tom Adcox Hernandez. Maybe for the next Wales Comic Con. Your first thing, would... British UK convention appearance. I would love that. We have a lot of Gorgorian fans over here. The show's really? on Disney Plus, I tell you. Oh, great. Oh, I would love that. That would be, I just was reading, Gray had just posted something about she's, or was it Gray? Or somebody else, somebody I know was going to do something that's coming up in England. Oh. I don't remember. Is there a con coming up there? There's Liverpool Comic Con. Maybe that's what it is, because I just read on Facebook, one of my friends, it's a boy, I can't even think of who it was. I don't think it was Gray now that I think of it. Um, but they said they were, they were doing, they were going to do that. And I was like, oh, oh my God, how did they get in on that? I want to do that. Oh, that's cool. You'll have to find out who it is and, you know, tell me privately, because yeah. they're probably not supposed to announce it publicly. Mm -hmm. I will. I'll, I'll text it to you. Yeah. Um, um, but I, uh, Candy Milo is uh, is going to interview or, or inter, in, uh, in, oh God, I can't think right now. Is going to introduce me to her con, her con person. She has a, a person that books her on all these cons, and I don't have anybody on because I haven't put the time into doing it and getting pictures and stuff made up. So that's my goal for the next couple of months to do. What is that? 
some of the gargoyles cast, including Tom Adcox and Numbers on the guest request thread for Wales Comic Con. Oh, Comic-Con. I love it. I love it. I love it. I I Lexington um, Funko Pop for you to sign. Oh, you do? Yeah, I'll, I'll get one. I'll get one for you to sign. Yeah. I've got all kinds of Lexington memorabilia stuff and I signed it. People send stuff to my agents, which I think now they're still, they're probably still sending it to SPV. And I get, you know, mail and I, but they'll, they'll, they'll forward it to me and I sign stuff all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. I think Garboil has really affected it. Like um, a lot of people, like um, I, I noticed a lot of the fans were autistic or on the spectrum which was so wonderful yay i'm autistic yay you rule because um and i think it was because like gargoyles you know the cat they were they were kind of shunned by people or people thought they were strange or anything so i think a lot of autistic people you know they they can sympathize with that being you know not paid attention to or taken differently or so i think that's why there's a, a huge fan base it's it's great but well, it's good that you say that because it is autism acceptance month yes it is yes, yeah I, yes, it or is. as i sometimes like to call it autism appreciation month i like that better I yeah i think it. i'll stop calling it now because i used to call uh, it autism awareness then i changed it to autism acceptance and now you know, well, a lot of people know about autism. They're aware of autism. There, so a lot of people are accepting of autism, but appreciation, yeah. we don't get a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like the appreciation. Add that. Yeah. Are you autistic? Or no, I don't not? think. Not that I know of. <laughs> oh, right. I was going to say the way you said it, it sounded like that you were autistic as well. No, I'm just a big. A- I'm just an ally. A huge You're neurotypical. Ally. That's mm. what. That's what me as we say yeah yeah they say they say not to like use high and low functioning labels now when they just say it's all just autism i think oh really apparently so from what i've heard but sometimes i do it to like i say i still say asperger's syndrome asperger's syndrome um because that's what i specifically have it's like uh high functioning autism um so yeah my my um a good friend of mine here he um he and his partner have uh, two um, autistic children, and they're both they're both on the spectrum. The 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 one the the girl is high functioning, and the boy is a little less. So, yeah. So I know a lot about that, and I've been around them a lot. Is the boy nonverbal by any chance? Um, he no, he is verbal. This is Petey. Oh, hi, Petey. Petey, look at that. Look at that's Amber. Oh, uh, oh <laughs> in your face. <laughs> um, no, the boy, um, but he has a lot of problems where um he just he I think he's um they had to put him into a uh like a uh, uh a system where they because they were having so many problems with him where he was, you know acting out and playing with knives and getting kind of dangerous and threatening threatening people and stuff so they're you know they're they were having a tough time you know trying to deal with that which you know any child any parent would have you know dealing with your kids that were yeah uh, you know acting out like that so yeah well apart from the like the playing with knives stuff and dangerous stuff that's literally me and my brother i'm high functioning my brother's you know, not in this world, like, a lot. He's more, he communicates through echolalia, which is, like, repeated phrases from video games and TV shows and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, wow. So my parents pretty much deal with two completely... People say, don't compare side. There is no side to the spectrum. There is just autism. is just one big thing. Um, yeah. I've had people say to me, I say, oh, yeah, me and my brother are autistic. And I say, well, yeah, your brother's autistic, but what are you? Because they see me as verbal, I, I, I communicate like everyone else. But yeah, I, but I also have autism, so yeah, it's like socialization, communication. I can't make eye contact with people for a long time. It, it's really easy over video chat because obviously, well, it's a picture, but in yeah. real life, it's it's kind of hard sometimes. It was really hard yeah. when I was a little kid, and yeah. also making friends. So um, that was oh, not wow. a very big strong point as a little Please. kid. Yeah. It's a, it's like saying, are you, uh, it's just like saying gay. 
are you really gay? Are you not so gay? Are you, you're just gay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah well, sure. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you very much. And I'm proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Thank you so much, Tom. Oh, you're too kind. You're making me blush. Oh, good. <laughs> Blushing is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I like to ask, uh, what projects have you done recently that you can talk about if you're not uh, stopped by NDAs, of course? Well, a lot of it is I stopped by NDA, but I did a I did a pilot not too long ago called Oh God, I think I can say the name. Um, if you can't, I'll just cut it out. Well, it had something to do with, um, oh God, I just can't remember. Megastore Mutts is, is the name of it. And I just won't say who produced or anything, but it was with, um, uh, it's, a, it's about a big giant store that has, uh, I could be getting, not saying that, but it's about animals and they get trapped in this big, mega store and so they they try it's how they navigate around and, and and so um and and i was excited do you know what the actress she's a comedian sarah silverman sounds she's familiar she's she's really funny she i really love her as a, as a comedian but her sister was uh one of the voiceovers because she has this voice where she kind of drones on and talks like that and her sister was exactly the same way so it was she has a great they both have great voices but wow uh, what's the sister called i don't remember her name i don't remember her name because we i met her real quick hi and we jumped right into the booth so um and uh i did a couple been doing a couple of commercials regular like uh radio commercials um is it laura silverman yes laura Yes, how'd you get that? I just searched up Susan Silverman and just um, that, yeah. Well, not Su- uh, no, what, what was her name? Sarah. 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 She's yeah. got another sister called Laura. Susan, so I searched up obviously the siblings Laura, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Laura is her name. Yeah. So, so uh, that, and I'm working with a friend of mine. We're working on creating the show. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, so so we're working on that, and it's about two hamsters, and we're we're thinking about calling it the misadventures of Porkchop and Tate. And Porkchop was one of the a hamster I had when I was a, when I was a kid, and I named it Porkchop, and uh, and Tate, and he chose the name Tate. So it's uh, the misadventures, and it's about their their story about how they sneak out of the cage and they get into all kinds of antics and stuff. So we're working on that, and. And uh, I think I'm going to have some of my, like uh, a couple of the fans that I have from Gargoyles, a lot of them are artists and and amazing artists. And um, so I'm thinking about like giving them a job and saying, you know, can you draw these storyboards out? Because usually if you're going to do a presentation to get the, the, the show sold, you so you know you have pictures and this is in this scene then this and and then you you draw you know you have them drawn out so I think it'd be great to give one of my fans you know that that draws you know and some money and an opportunity to to do that so I'm that's working on that that's you know coming along very slowly because it's trying to do it in my spare time so um yeah that's that's about what's going on and auditioning every day usually some kind of get some kind of you know audition almost every day so do, do you have an agent in England is your agent there or no uh not yeah my parents have said um I'm not gonna agent until I get out of education which I'm trying to but then they're like stay in education keep studying performing arts so I don't know so you know it's kind of it's kind of hard really to tell at this point I can hear one of your dogs uh, growling <laughs> yes can you he's yeah. under here he's under is it PT again no it's this one's Cody <laughs> oh he wants some attention, so he's. Can I see him, or can you not lift him up? I can't grab him. He's way under the table there. Where'd you go? Where are you? Oh, he's laying down flat. I can't reach Aww, him. It's all um, right. Yeah. So, um, uh, what was what was I saying? Forgot agent. Uh, agents. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of important to get to get. Still here. 
but it's hard to, you know, sometimes it's difficult, you know, it's, it's, getting a, a demo is, you know, the number one is that you have to have a demo to send it out to agents, but um, you need an agent to get voiceover work and to get yeah, an agent. It's, yeah, <laughs> you need it's a really, demo full of voiceover work and to get yeah. voiceover work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So with me, I, when I just redid my demo tape, the one that's on my uh, website, uh, I just took from commercials that I've done or all, they're all, it's all work that I've done, but you can get, I know there's like, you can go into a studio, but it's quite expensive and, and, you know, they'll give you the copy, they'll give you the dialogue and then they add in the music. So it sounds like a professional spot. But that's very expensive, some of them. But my guy that I just do, he just edits. He just takes, like, I'll get. But I stopped getting copies of commercials that I've done because I did so many. I mean, I've done over 2,000 commercials for radio and TV. So I, do, I used to keep, I used to call them, can I get a copy of that? Can I, right away, I'd get a copy, get a copy. But now I just don't kind of get a copy. And if I have to redo my demo, I will, you know, I'm not against you know having them give me the copy and doing it and them adding all the things but that's usually a lot more expensive yeah so, yeah and it was just easy yeah yeah um to round off this interview i'd like to ask you a little sort of question favor questionable favor it's just sure. a little sort of fun thing i had in mind i'm doing a presentation for my college on voiceover work and I was wondering if you wanted to be in it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was because I, I have I have a slide of people, just pictures of voiceover actors. I think the only ones I've got on there are Peter Cullen, Frank Welker, and Tara Strong. So I thought oh, I after our chat, I'm, 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 I'm probably want to add you onto it and maybe. Oh, absolutely! One hundred percent. Sign me up. And you know what? I, there's, another, there's another thing as well. I'll, I'll have a video of you talking, if you don't mind. Me just asking you, what is the best advice you could give to someone who is looking to be voiceover? Um, I would say, first, I would say, whatever you grab a, a paper of anything, you know, if you're looking at an article, is to read it out loud. You know, read it out loud and add some inflections and different things and also um uh just any chance you get is just read something out loud so you get used to hearing your voice and pitching it and even practicing on you know uh taping yourself you can re just record yourself and read the dialogue you can take a commercial you saw on tv that said eat butterfingers they're good for you or whatever you know just and just practicing that and write it down, then just practice and practice saying it different ways, practice it in different attitudes. And, you know, and so practicing a lot, I think is, is really good. And then of course, the, if you can find a decent class that's, uh, that you know is reputable and you can afford it to take a class always helps because you get used to working. But nowadays you can do it. You can like my microphone is right here. Um, you can you can just practice on your own microphone. You know, you can just practice just doing reading stuff all the time. Characters, you know, that you see on TV, you can mimic them and, you know, cart animation. You can just just practice, practice, practice. And then. And as much as you, you know, get used to getting closer to the microphone, get back and, and just try different things all the time. Don't be afraid to try different things. I think that's really helpful. And then the next step would be is to, uh, is to make a demo somehow, get, it, get a demo made and uh, then send out to different agencies. Some agencies, you know, don't respond. I've, you know, I've been through that when I was younger. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say that's in that order. Just practice a lot, read out loud a lot uh, and practice commercials and practice mimicking characters of your favorite characters. If you see, you know, a character that you especially uh, like and you think you could do the voice or you could do that, practice it, practice it. Do it on the, record yourself doing it. You can really hear different things that you 
that work for you and that don't work for you or if you you know and finding what you're good at like I know I'm not like I don't do proper character Cody shh I don't do like characters that are uh upper crust or you know very staunch I don't do those characters very well there's guys out there that do that really easily naturally so I think knowing what your niche Mm -hmm. is or niche is um is very important to know that you're not trying to read for you know I could be this part and I can be this part and I can be that well I know I can do nerdy characters very well and I know I play dumb characters really well because I've been cast in a lot of characters that are real dumb so I can talk dumb you know so there's certain characters that you know it's good to find out and to know what you are really good at not to put yourself in a box but there's certain things that you know you excel at or that come more naturally to you so I would just say practice 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 get it make a demo somehow and then start sending out to all the agencies you know there's a a, crap load of agencies you can send out to so i don't know about in in england if you guys you know how but i'm sure if somebody in england can have a an agent that's here right yeah 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 i believe so yeah some people there's some people have a uk agent and the us agent which is what oh, i'm wow. planning on trying to get just to see if i can just get you know it be if, apparently i've had people tell me it, it'll be easy to get jobs in america because of my accent <laughs> Yeah, you have a great voice. I love Thank you. Voice. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. Do you know Z? Z. Uh, is it Andrews? Z. All of a sudden, I can't think of her name. She lives mm. in England, and she she's uh, I did an interview actually with her. Oh. Um, yeah. I can't, all of a sudden, her the, her last name is, is slipping me, but she's um, trans, and uh, she's uh has a great voice too and she's like in the same position you are i think she's trying to get an agent and do all that stuff too well that's cool wow yeah Yeah, you'll have to send me an interview you did with her yeah well if you ever get a demo and you get it done then i will give it to my uh i'll send it into my agent to avo and get you uh you know when you get it all done and you're ready oh thank you tom i appreciate it I love helping people out. I love it. Any chance I can can to help somebody. And you seem like you're such a kind person and a good person. And I would I love to help people like you. Oh, Tom. Yeah. I'm sweet. Just being honest. That's such a lovely way to end off this interview. Oh. So wholesome. So so wholesome. Oh. oh, well, thank you so much. I'm just I'm really glad that you asked me to do this. I'm yeah, really I'm glad excited. as well. Yeah, so now we, I feel like we're actual friends instead of just uh, Facebook friends. I feel like you're actually my friend. Yeah, I feel like that as well. I mean, your voice is so soothing. You literally just need to do like an audio tape of Lexington just telling a story. It would send me to sleep. It's so soothing. Uh, that's Now you're being too kind now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amber. You're welcome, Tom. So aside from your website, where else can we find you on social media? Um, of course, I'm on Facebook. Anybody can Facebook me. I'll, I'll accept your friend request under Tom Adcox Hernandez. And uh, I'm not on Instagram, but I am on Twitter. So you could follow me on Twitter. Yeah, sure. I'll give um, you a follow. Yeah. I mean, I post a lot of uh, political stuff. So if you're kind of... Oh, I'm already following you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, good. All right. That's good. I, so I, I don't go on there as much as Facebook. On Facebook, I'm just, I just go crazy with the political stuff a little too much. But, but what can you say? You know, I'm a political type of guy. And yeah, just... well, that, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't really get involved in politics. I don't, it's, it's hard to explain really. Like, I'm not on any side. I'm just neutral. I'm just in the middle saying I don't support any side. I don't like, yeah. It's not like I don't support as in like, I hate, but like, yeah. It's also it's complicated. Yeah, yeah. It's also compl- complicated for my little brain. 
<laughs> but yeah, you are you are a respectable gentleman. I respect all your wishes and your opinions and stuff like that. So there is Thank that. You. I respect. Thank you. So yes, you're welcome. So to you at home thank you so much for watching this video make sure to go look at tom's website and give him so much love because he deserves all the love in the world he's so precious oh my gosh um so thank you so much for watching thank and you. you're welcome and we'll see you later around it's goodbye later, from me you. goodbye from tom and we'll see you around bye okay. bye everybody and cut